Good morning. Thank you for joining me, Pastor Zach Williams of Flat Creek Baptist Church here in Gainesville, Georgia, for another edition of New Horizons, the daily podcast and radio ministry of Flat Creek Baptist Church. It is my greatest joy to always be able to dive deep into God's Word with you. And I pray these daily devotions are a blessing to you as they are a blessing to me. If you would like more information about Flat Creek Baptist Church, please visit our website, flatcreekchurch.net. You can find all the information about us that you need to know there who we are as a church, what we believe, where we're located on the map, our service times, as well as how you can give directly to New Horizons podcast and radio ministry. All that information is on our website, flatcreekchurch.net. Friends, the greatest thing you can do for us is to pray for us. I, I just ask you to please pray for us as a church as we continue to seek to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today we're going to continue in Mark chapter 12 and we're going to be looking in Mark chapter 12 verse 41 through verse 44. This is a profound text, one that you will know very well and one that I'm very much looking forward to giving to you today. So let's look here in Mark chapter number 12 verse 41 through verse 44. Sitting across from the temple treasury. So here's Jesus. He's still in the temple. He's been examined. Now he's turned the spotlight on them. And now Jesus is sitting in the temple complex. He's looking across to the treasury. And he's watching how the crowd dropped money into the treasury. So they would come forward in their long robes, in their fancy garments, and their giving was a public spectacle. They wanted everybody to see the way they gave. You remember yesterday, we were talking about the scribes who wore the long robes, who did things for public recognition and power and position. This is who they are. This is what they would do. Very much for show, they went about showing their religiousness. And so here they are, the temple treasury. They would do the same thing there. They would walk in with their big fancy robes and they would come by with their big gifts and they would fill up the temple treasury and then they would be celebrated by men for their great gifts that they had given. The Bible says that Jesus watched how the crowd dropped money into the treasury. You see it right there. This was a public spectacle of giving. And it was all about power. It was all about prestige. It was all about position. To see how this one individual gave this and another individual gave this. And it was all about just seeking power. All about righteousness unto self. Now watch what happens. Many rich people were putting in large sums. And here she comes, don't you see her? Verse 42, that poor widow, she came and she dropped in two tiny coins, just very little. The actual word here is the word two lepta, which is a cauldron. The lepton was the smallest and least valuable coin in use. It was 1 64th of a daily wage. It was the smallest Roman coin. You're talking about the, 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 the smallest amount that you can imagine, friends. I mean, consider that a person made, say, uh, $20 an hour. And this would be one penny. Okay, that, that's how small this is. This is the cheapest of the cheap. This is the lowest of the low. This is a, a poor widow who has absolutely nothing left. She is so extremely poor, yet here she comes, that poor widow with absolutely nothing. She has two lepta in her hands. As she walks through the temple treasury, everybody turns their back to her. Everybody shuns her. She is a nobody. What gift does she have to bring? Probably even there were some who were laughing at her as she came through the complex. But the Bible says that when she came, she dropped in those two tiny coins worth very little. So here she comes, and just like those who gave a large sum of money. She comes and she gives the two left to those two tiny coins. In our day and age, it'd be like a penny. 
And you say to yourself, who gave more? Did those religious elites, those rich people give more? Or did this lady give more? Who gave the most? Well, in the eyes of the world, it would be the one who gave the large sum of money. After all, they gave thousands upon thousands upon thousands. But here she is giving two tiny coins, the smallest of all coins in Roman civilization. And Jesus brings his disciples. He says, come here, boys, and let me show you something. Can't you see them all there as they're lined up? And Jesus just kind of huddles them together. And he says, uh, just real discreetly, I just want you to look to your left. And you're going to see a poor widow woman there. And I, all of you just saw her, but I, but I want you to just look at her for a moment. You remember those two coins that she just gave? Well, what does he say? I assure you, this poor woman has put more than all of those giving to the temple treasury. Well, how, how this must have startled the disciples. What do you mean she's given more? She only gave two coins, Jesus. Uh, that last guy gave $10,000. This other person gave 100000 That guy gave a check for 5000 what, what do you mean she gave more? And Jesus says, for they gave out of their surplus, but she gave out of their poverty. And she's put everything in that she possesses. She gave everything she had to live on. You see those guys? Sure, they gave a lot. But understand, they only gave the excess. They've still got thousands at home. And when they go home today, they're going to eat their fancy meals. And that $1,000, $10,000, $100,000 they put in there, it's not going to phase them one bit. Not only that, they just went through it because it was for show and it was for religious purposes. But she came in here, this poor widow woman who has absolutely nothing, and she gave it all. 100% of all she had, she gave it to the Lord. And what Jesus does here is he says she gave everything she had to live on. And what Jesus is saying here, friends, is this. He's, he's calling our minds back to two principles. Number one, when we think about giving, when we think about giving, friends, it's not about a religious tithe. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. It's not about making sure that we give a certain percentage. It's about making sure that we have prayed to God, sought his face and said, Lord, whatever you want me to give, I'm going to give it in faith, trusting that you are going to take care of me and my family. If that's 10%, that's 10%. If that's more than 10, that's more than 10. If that's less than 10, it's less than 10. God, I'm giving you what you ask me to give in faith. But what Jesus is also calling us to remember here, friends, is this. When it comes to us, we, we can't give the leftovers. We must give it all if we're going to have a relationship with him. I'm not talking about your money, friends. I'm talking about your life. Don't give the leftovers to God. Give him your whole heart, your whole soul. And allow the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your life. The Holy Spirit to indwell you. To change you. To reconcile you to God. Deny yourself. Take up the cross. Follow Him to the ends of the earth. Give Him 100%. Give Him everything you are. That He might extend the gospel to the ends of the earth through you. More than your money. God wants you. So have you given your life to Him? That's the question of the hour. Have you given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ? I asked a moment ago, who gave more? Did, did they give more? Or did she give more? She gave more because she gave all she had. And friends, the most you can give God is when you give Him your life. Have you given Him your heart today? I pray if you haven't, that today you will. If you've never given your life to Christ, I pray that today would be that day. If you give your life to Jesus today, would you let us know here at Flat Creek just go to our website, flatcreekchurch.net. Go to our connections page and let us know of your decision to follow Christ. We would love to come alongside of you. May God bless you. And I'll see you next time on New Horizons.